handle the truth. It's easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. It's an old quote, but it seems relevant now more than ever. We can be easily manipulated. Our brains are constantly playing tricks on us. Not only that, we are manipulated to believe silly things. Despite the scientific revolution and the subsequent Age of Enlightenment, which began 500 years ago, hundreds of millions of people around the world still believe in nonsense. They struggle with critical thinking. While critical thinking requires testing claims and analyzing facts in order to determine if that claim is true, mostly true, partially true, or false, most of us rather just have beliefs or make claims. Oh, and then later on we may have to find evidence that backs up our beliefs we already have or claims we already made, but if we can avoid that, even better. And of course, we have to let the whole world know about our beliefs on social media. One MIT study found that fake news on Twitter travels six times faster than real news. So why is all of this? We're smart, rational creatures, aren't we? Why do we fall for bullcrap? Why do we believe bullcrap? Why can't we critically think? Or why do we find critical thinking so difficult? Well, first of all, we mostly rely on our brains to work in default mode. Our brains are constantly trying to look for shortcuts and patterns. There's even a fancy name for this. Psychologists call this heuristics. heuristics. Basically, a heuristic is any approach to finding a quick solution or reaching a quick conclusion that is not the best or even rational, but it's good enough so we can go on with our lives. Heuristics are cognitive shortcuts that we develop through our past experiences, and they come in pretty handy. Imagine having to stress out over everything every single decision in life. It'd be difficult to get anything done. Enter heuristics, so that our brains can save energy and work more efficiently. But those shortcuts don't always help us, so check it out. There was a 2008 Caltech study in which scientists hooked up an fMRI to subjects and presented them with different glasses of wine, labeled from $5 all the way up to $90. However, the scientists never told the subjects that the wine in every single glass was actually the exact same. Subjects tried wines and later reported the $90 wine tasted better. More importantly, the medial prefrontal cortex of their brains for these same folks became more active when they were tasting the wine. This part of the brain is important for decision making, planning future events, and reward comparison. So basically, that part of their brains became active not due to true sensory signals or inherent qualities, but to just signals of quality, like the labels. Our brains can fool us due to being stuck in default mode. In fact, brain teasers exist as a way we can escape our default mode. Solve this brain teaser. I am the beginning of the end, the beginning of eternity, and the end of all time. What am I? Now pause the video and see if you can quickly solve this without looking it up. Okay, the answer is the letter E. If you got it right, congratulations. If you did Google the answer, well, that leads us to the next reason why we fall for bullcrap. We often just accept new information as it is given to us. Whether we actually admit it or not, we often automatically trust a source no matter what it is. Oh, you may think you're a critical thinker because you yell fake news when you see CNN report something, but then right after that, you blindly accept whatever Fox News is saying without questioning it. In order to critically think, we have to be able to evaluate where we get new information. Now, that takes a lot of freaking time, so ultimately you might have to figure out other shortcuts, like looking at different media bias charts, for example. Understanding that those charts also have biases, of course. Speaking of biases... 
Confirmation bias is the tendency of people to favor information that confirms their existing beliefs or hypotheses. We see it when folks pick information that supports their own views, when they ignore information that hurts their views, but especially looking at how people think when they interact with ambiguous evidence. Let's pretend your existing beliefs or hypotheses are in this bucket. It's actually fairly easy to take bits of information from all over the place to neatly fit into your bucket. You can even cherry pick data or put a lid on that bucket to keep out all new data. It's pretty convenient. One of the most common ways con artists persuade people is by tapping into their existing emotions. Sure, you can get them vulnerable by getting them sad, but fear and anger especially work well. Getting folks scared or angry is a great way to get them to believe bullcrap, as these emotions make them less likely to think rationally. If Alex Jones repeatedly warns you that the government is poisoning the water supply with fluoride to make us dumber and weaker, you obviously might get scared for the safety of your kids. But which would you do first? Research all the studies on fluoride in drinking water? Or, just to be safe, go ahead and buy that $242 water filtration system on Alex Jones' website. also known as the reiteration, reiteration effect. effect. The, the illusory truth, truth effect is the tendency of people to believe bullcrap after being exposed to it over and over and over again. Growing up in the 1990s, I was constantly exposed to commercials like this. Milk's got stuff that's good for my bones and stuff that's good for my muscles or ads like this that said that milk was like the healthiest drink around. It gave us strong bones and stuff. It was full of nutrients. As it turns out, this massive ad campaign which was financed by the dairy industry, by the way, was quite misleading. Milk is not really that special and not exceptionally healthy after all. But we all believed it since we heard it over and over and over and over. Seriously, go ask any millennial right now if they think milk is a healthy drink essential for a balanced diet. Odds are they'll say yes. And it's all because of those darn ad campaigns. We often associate peer pressure with kids, especially in a school setting. One thing about peer pressure is that you might not even know that it's happening. That's why this teacher that I had last year, Mr. Carson, always told us to keep our antenna up. You know, pay attention. Like that time Reno asked me to help him out by cheating. But come on, we are social creatures. Throughout human history, our survival has been strongly linked to our ability to get along with each other. Why would peer pressure go away when we're adults? Not only do we not like to hurt people, we don't like to even offend them. You might be thinking, well, I offend people all the time. Eh. I don't know you, but I'd guess not as often as you think. You see, most of us are stuck in an echo chamber with people who share the same values as us. Whether it's our circle of friends in real life, or especially online, we don't want to offend those within our echo chambers. Even if we disagree with something, we often don't want to be vocal about it. Especially if it seems our opinion is the minority opinion, and speaking out might mean being marginalized by your team. Just as we want to fit in, we also sometimes don't want to fit in. You know, we want to think we're part of some exclusive group. Studies have demonstrated that people believe in nonsense, often because they know they are in the minority. Similar to being cool for liking that underground band before everyone else does, it's cool to believe in Bigfoot because hardly anyone else does. Now, this last one is one that doesn't get enough attention, in my opinion. First of all, if you haven't read the book, 
Merchants of Doubt, I strongly recommend it. It looks at the similarities of the so-called climate change controversy and earlier so-called controversies revolving around smoking tobacco, acid rain, and the hole in the ozone layer. Basically, in all those so-called controversies, a scientific consensus made claims and a very small but loud minority was able to make it seem like there was this balance between between opposing viewpoints. You know, like, well, 50% of scientists say smoking tobacco is bad for your health, but also 50% of scientists say it's not. So the truth surely is somewhere in the middle, don't you know? Well, no, absolutely not. This is a bias known as false balance or both sidesism, and journalists are guilty of it all the time. Often, journalists are just trying to be balanced when they report, but this leads to the spread of misinformation because people don't know who to believe. As it turns out, there isn't much of a controversy about climate change. The scientific community overwhelmingly attributes a majority of the planet warming up since 1950 to human activity, especially people burning fossil fuels. However, a handful of scientists out of tens of thousands have disputed this conclusion. Now, these handful of scientists have profited greatly from doing so and can easily be discredited, but most people don't know that. This is why more than 30% of Americans still don't believe the planet warming up over the last 70 years is caused by human activity. All you need is a little bit of doubt to make it seem that, well, we really don't no, do we? To sum this all up, we fall for bullcrap because critically evaluating new information, actually taking the time to analyze it, is really difficult. But none of us are immune to falling victim to bad information, myself definitely included. Okay, and so we can blame our brains, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't fight our brains. We should be actively resisting these eight reasons why we fall for bullcrap. One way we can do this, especially since critical thinking can be so time consuming is to at least be aware of how we fall for bullcrap. So you watching this video is a great step there, partner. But another thing we can do is, well, wait, put number two back up there. Yeah, number two. That's a good one to start with. Let's begin with evaluating credibility. Constantly ask ourselves, why do we trust sources of information? Wait a second, how can we trust any source of information, including this video? Well, find those sources that have a long track record of good reporting. Find the experts, or those who have devoted most of their lives to a specific field. Hopefully, we can develop trust with certain sources so we don't have to do the legwork. And when experts within the same field disagree, then we might have to do some more legwork, but always suspend judgment when doing so. It's okay to not have everything figured out. After all, human progress is only going to come with more humility in the world. Embrace the uncertainty. Don't fall for bullcrap. I've had enough of this bullcrap. I've had enough of this bullcrap. Of this crap. Of this crap. Of this crap. Of this crap. So, what do you think of the Raid Shadow Legends ad? <laughs> Let me know down below. If you are new to this channel, I mostly do brief histories of bands and introductions to films. My next brief history of a band actually returns in a couple weeks. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.